Hi everyone. So this video is going to be focusing on how to factor a polynomial that has two terms but one into difference of squares. Now you also notice we'll learn how to factor out sum of squares but the problem is every time you factor out sum of squares your answer is going to be prime and I'll explain why that's going to be prime. So this video is only going to focus on figuring out what to do when you have two terms and it's either a sum or a difference of squares. So we'll go ahead and get started. Our first example is going to be x squared minus 9. Now when you have a problem like x squared minus 9, remember, first thing is try to take out a GCF. Because if you can take out a GCF, you want to actually take it out. Now in this example, there's no GCF. So that means that I can go ahead and actually factor out a square. But how do you know that this is going to be a difference of squares? Or that it's even squared? Your first thing what helps you out is, look at 9. 9 is a perfect square. A number times a number gives you 9. For example, 3 times 3 gives you 9. So because you know it's a square, then this probably means that this is going to be a square. Well, what about this one, x squared? Well, the reason why you know this is also a perfect square is because you can divide this exponent by 2. Every time you ever get a polynomial expression that has a variable, try to divide that exponent by 2. If you can, that means that it's a perfect square. So that turns out this is a perfect square. So the base of x squared is x, and the reason why this power is 1 is because if you divide that 2 by 2, 2 divided by 2 will give you 1. And the perfect square of 9 was 3 times 3, so I'm going to put a 3 under here. Now that's the hardest part, being able to actually find out the bases, because your answer is going to be the same parentheses with the same numbers, x and 3, with opposite signs. And that's your answer. But what about if you have x squared plus 4? Now remember how I said there's no such thing as a sum of squares? Does everyone see how this is a square and this is a square? So that means that 4, the base of 4 is 2, the base of x squared is x, but why can't I factor out a sum of squares? Why is this answer prime? The reason why it's prime is let's say I wanted to actually solve this. x squared plus 4 is equal to 0 subtract 4, subtract 4, I get x squared equals to negative 4. If I just find the square root of both sides, x is going to end up equaling to plus or minus square root of negative 4. But if you were to type that into your calculator, you can't get the square root of negative 4 because it will give you an error. That's because there is no actual x's, reason why your answer is prime. So anytime you notice that your numbers are square and your variables are square, but there's a plus sign, you can't factor it out, so your answer is always prime or not factorable. Now what about 4x squared minus 25? They always want to make this a little bit more difficult, and that's because they want to add an extra number. But what you have to do is always notice there's two terms. I can't take out a GCF. Now, what do you notice about these numbers? Hopefully you notice that the base of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, and the base of 25 is 5, because 5 times 5 gives you 25. And remember about the exponents? I can divide this exponent by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So this is x to the first power. So I found my bases. So your next step is to put your answers, your bases, in your parentheses. 2x, 5. 2x, 5 with opposite signs. Now the signs don't matter. This one could be a plus sign, this could be a minus sign, or it could be vice versa. As long as you have a plus and a minus with your bases, that's all that matters. And that's your answer. Now let's look at our fourth example. Well, what happens when you actually have to take out a GCF? Hopefully you'll notice that these two terms have a common 3 in common. So I'm going to take that out. But remember, I always put my bases underneath here because I want to figure out what I'm left with. If I take out a 3, this cancels out to give me x squared. This divides to give me minus 4. So normally you would think you're done because you took out GCF, but you're not. You have to check to see if you can keep going with this. And you guys see how this is the difference of squares? The base of this is x. 2 divided by 1 is 1. The base of this is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4, and it's a difference of squares, so I'm able to do it. So now, two parentheses, x, 2, x, 2, minus, plus, and that's my answer. Except you cannot forget about this outside number, your GCF, because the 3 has to go on the outside. And that's your final answer. Okay? So, when you have a difference of squares, you want to make sure that you notice that your exponents are can be divisible by 2, meaning 2 can go into it, and your numbers are perfect numbers, perfect squares. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do two more examples. 
This is when the math gets a little bit more complicated because they introduce another variable. You notice how here this is 4x to the fourth. Well, this is a bigger number than 2, and this is now has a y to the second. But don't let that discourage you and think that you're going to get this wrong. Because what you'll notice is there's two terms. I can't take out GCF. And what do you notice about 4 and 25? It's a perfect square. What about x? How do I know if this is a perfect square? Can you divide that 4 by 2? Yes. So that means that this, the base of 4 would be 2. The base of x to the fourth divided by 2, that gives you 2 is x squared. What is the base of 25? 5, divide that by 2, you get y. So that means that your answer is going to be now 2x squared, 5y. 2x squared, 5y. Minus, plus sign, and that's your final answer. So even if they give you a complicated example or a question, just make sure that you have two terms, the numbers are perfect squares, your exponents can be divided by 2 and put your bases underneath and then put them in your parentheses and you'll be done. So now let's look at our last one. x to the fourth minus 16. Well, I know this is a perfect square because 2 goes into 4. So my base of here is x squared. I know 16 is a perfect square because 16, perfect square, square root of 16 is 4. So now I have my bases. So two parentheses, x squared, 4, x squared, 4, plus sign, minus. Now, normally you'd think you're done, but what do you notice about x squared minus 4? Isn't that another difference of squares? So sometimes you have to just check your work to make sure that you can't find, you can't keep going. So my base of this is x, and my base of this is 2. What that means is I have to keep on going. This x squared minus 4 will now turn into x minus 2 times x plus 2. But what about this one? Why couldn't I actually factor out this one? The reason is you see how it's a sum of squares, and a sum of squares is prime, so you can't touch it. So it just drops down to give you x squared plus 4. Box in your answer, and you're done. So what you need to do anytime you're working with difference of squares is to make sure that your exponent can be divisible by 2. If 2 goes into that, you're going to actually divide 4 by 2 and put whatever you get here and then just find the square root of that number. Now in the case that when you factor it out you can keep on going, just keep on going, find your bases again, work it out, and drop whatever can't be factored out, bring it down so that it can be next to what was able to keep going and keep getting factored. Okay? So this video was just focusing on what happens when you have two terms, it's either a square or a cube. And we we're working on just squares. Remember, sum of squares is always going to be prime, and you could actually factor out a different square or find your basis. Alright, guys, hope you liked it.